With us tonight are two of the three creators of Blessing, and they are the heart and soul of this exhibition, which was both a labor of love, and as we're learning more and more as we've been here with them, a real test of stamina, both getting it done and, and uh, birthing it and living with it for the last seven years. Rabbi A.B. Ingber is founding director of the Office of Interfaith Community Engagement and adjunct professor of theology at Xavier in Cincinnati, not New Orleans, Cincinnati. And for more than three de decades was executive director of the Hillel Jewish Student Center there. His work in Darfur and on behalf of Soviet Jewry are just two examples of the way he daily lives his faith. So if word gets out that our exhibit canceled a Mahjong exhibition, does that mean we can never go to Florida? I mean, I understand what the, what the implications are. Dear friends, this exhibit has come home. You might think that an exhibit created by three close friends, James Buchanan, Bill Magis, and myself, would be home only when it came back to the banks of the Ohio River. But it is home here in Cleveland. It's home because almost 40 years to the day, I traveled to Cincinnati to interview for the rabbinic program at Hebrew Union College. My family in Montreal was not affluent, and so I took a flight that included a stop in Cleveland. I missed my Cincinnati flight. <laughs> and I desperately reached out to the only people I knew in the state of Ohio, Dr. Lou and Evie Rosenblum. I knew Lou through the Cleveland Council on Soviet Antisemitism and our shared work in the heroic struggle to rescue Russian Jews, a struggle that has continued to shape my life to this day. I spent the night in the Rosenblum home and the next day, I continued my journey, a journey that began here and comes home this evening. I and the exhibit are home. And God willing, as was mentioned at the end of 2013 or the beginning of 2014, the exhibit will be home again when it will open the new Museum of History of Polish Jews in Warsaw, Poland. But my mind also goes to another home. A home indeed closer to Warsaw than to Cleveland. My father's home in Szebrzeszyn in Szebrzeszyn, Poland. On September 1st, 1939, the Nazis invaded Poland. That day would forever change the lives of two young Polish boys, both age 19. My father standing by the side of his father at the sewing machine in their one-room home, and Karol Wojtyla, who was taking communion in the Cathedral of Krakow. In just a few weeks, my father would begin a journey in what has come to be known as the Holocaust. When the war ended, Karol found himself under communist rule in Poland, my father in a slave labor camp in the Soviet Union. When on November 1st, 1946, Karol Wojtyla was ordained as a priest, my father had just reached a displaced persons camp near Frankfurt. That fateful day in 1939 and the catastrophe of the subsequent murder of six million Jews brought the world to the brink of its moral death. But Pope John Paul II, the unlikely Polish Pope, brought his personal history, his testament of love and understanding, and his celebration of all humanity to the chair of St. Peter. He put foundations beneath the teachings of Nostra Aetate. He confronted the evils of anti-Semitism and built bridges with the Jewish world unlike any other Pope in history. All four of my grandparents were murdered in the Holocaust. There were few miracles in my parents' lives, yet they believed that the world could yet redeem itself. They believed that love and goodness could again triumph over evil, 
They believed that God would yet have a plan for miracles in their lives. Karol Wojtyla shared those same prayers, shared those same dreams. That is why on May 18, 2005, exactly seven years ago, we opened this exhibit on what would have been Pope John Paul II's 85th birthday. Together with my cherished colleagues James Buchanan and Bill Magis, we were privileged to build this exhibit. To tell the story of Jerzy Kluger and Karol Wojtyla, Vanovice and Krakow, Rome and Israel. To tell the story of faith and goodness, friendship and respect, love of humanity and the courage to act. To tell the story of miracles. Thank you for bringing us home.